Today is April the 4th, 2019, and a video I'm going to make today I hope helps others uh, answer this question. I've been uh, searching recently for uh, other people's experience with uh, what voltage to use on their uh, on their telescope. This is, a, as you can see here, it's a Mead 10-inch uh, LX200 GPS, all that stuff. A lot, of, a lot of these are around. Works beautiful. I'm very, very happy with it. My grandson and I go out in the desert here up in the New Mexico, which is really dark, and we've made some beautiful pictures, but that's not what this is about. What this is about is um, the information that I was looking for was the proper voltage. Now, this one right here, I don't want to move the camera around anymore, and I have to, but it says right there, 12 volts DC in, right there. I believe you can uh, see what I'm pointing at there. There's so many things in this picture, it's actually hard to see. Anyway, it does say 12 volts DC in, and here's what I use. And, and you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. This is a, um, it says 12 volts DC out at 1.6 amps. Well, these are unregulated. These are called linear power supplies. They're not switch mode power supplies. And uh, that 1.6 amps, the 12 volts is probably at 1.6 amps. Well, mine says 12 volts. Some people say it's supposed to be 14. Some people say it's supposed to be 18. I think I've even seen people say it's supposed to be 21. And then the argument gets in there of plus and minus and all this kind of baloney. I think it's a lot of nonsense. But anyway, here's what I do. I use this one. And when I plug this into a wall outlet here at the house, it works great. But I'm going to show you what I use. Um, out in the field. Okay, first I have this. I plug that in. <clears throat> then I have a plug right here. So in case I, I stumble over it, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll unplug it instead of, you know, ripping the wires in two. That's not, that's a good idea. It's, it's polarized. Then I have a fuse right here in the middle. We're going to take the fuse out in a minute. That's the way we're going to measure the current. But the first thing we're going to do is plug it into what I know on my telescope works good. We're going to measure the open circuit voltage here. So let's do that first. Tonight I'm going to make a quick video on something I've been working on all day long and I've gotten it down to a point. I think I can make it uh, uh, very much to the point. Uh, this is about what the voltage and current requirements are for this uh, 10 inch Mead LX200 GPS scope. I made uh, a lot of measurements with I came out here with my uh, Tektronix equipment and voltmeter and ammeters and all that stuff and opened up the circuits by um, inserting the ammeter and removing the fuse and putting it in the circuit and went through a whole lot of stuff. And then I said, well, why don't I just build something to measure it all so we can see it all at one time? So that's what I did. And the reason I did this, the reason I wanted these measurements is because when I started looking on the Internet, I couldn't find this data. And all I want is data, and that's all I'm giving you is data. Your telescope may be different. And, and wh what was confusing me is a lot of the discussion was about should, should it be 12 volts or 14 volts or 18 volts? I think I even saw one that said it's supposed to be 21 volts. Now maybe those are different models than what I have. Here's the one I have right there. I just showed you the side of it. Right there it says 12 volts DC in. Okay, so I've got it plugged in. I use a, uh, this is not something that I bought for the telescope. It's just something I have. This, is, this one says 12 volts at 1.6 amps. I don't know if you can read that or not, but that's what it says. It's a linear power supply. It's not a switch mode. So it's only 12 volts at 1.6 amps or thereabouts. So we plug it into the wall outlet. And our line voltage, according to this one, is uh, 111 volts. It's kind of low right now it, because I've been a little workshop. If I... Uh, I unplug the uh, heater in here, it'll be different. Here's my battery voltage. We'll be using that in a minute. That's not important right now. I forgot I, show, I showed you that. But anyway, what I did is I very lovingly and painstakingly uh, put a shunt over this meter right here. I chose this meter because it's got a scale from 0 to 2, which is 2 amps. So there's a half amp, 1 amp, 1 and a half, 2. So just ignore that top scale. Okay, and here's our controller. There's our voltage. Now the only thing we have to keep in mind 
is that according to my fluke meters and my tectronics meters, this one measures 200 millivolts too low. So this 14.2 is actually 14.4. So all, all we gotta do is keep that in mind. Okay, now let's turn it on. I'm gonna flip it on right here and we'll watch what happens. See, now that we put a load on it, it says uh, LX200 GPS, etc. And it's drawing uh, uh, right at uh, 250 milliamps. And it's about 13 volts. Welcome to Auto Start. We're, we're going to bypass all of this. Uh, I, I don't think it's necessary. Well, maybe we ought to watch it just for the sake of documentation. Watch it um, set up a little bit. Smart drive, initializing smart drive. See, it went up to 400 milliamps. These are things I've measured, like I say, with the individual instruments. So this is just confirming it. And I think you can hear it just barely turning. Anyway, let's get out of this so that we can get right to the point. I think if I hit mode a couple of times, it'll uh, give me control. There you go. All we want to do is, uh, is say, go speed, or the rate is max. What we want to do is just slew the telescope, uh, you know, up and down. So we're putting maximum load on it. And see what the voltage and current drops to. Okay, I'll slew it upwards. So it's about 625 or so milliamps, 12.5 volts. 12 point, same going down. About, uh, let's see, is that the same amount of current? About 650 milliamps. I gotta watch this thing so I don't run it up against its, uh, its stops here. Okay, we got it about level. I need to level it here. Now we'll do both axes at one time. So that's a little over an amp, 1.05 amps, one amp. And the voltage drops to like 11.9 uh, at one amp. That's what this one draws. That's it. I've got it up, so if I'm, I'm going to turn it back down. So, um, one amp at 11.9 volts. Now, uh, what I wanted to know was do I get the same thing when I plug it into my uh, outlet? I mean, my. Uh, I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to move the power plug over here. This is a uh, a thousand watt trip light power inverter. It's run off of this huge battery right there, so you can see it's powered on, off and on, powered up, and plug it in. And uh, that's our battery voltage. So the, the battery is pretty close to fully charged, 12.46. I think I think theoretically it's supposed to be 12.6 fully charged, but that's close enough. It only drops 10 millivolts on full load. If I if I forget to show you that, okay. It says we got 13.3 volts output. But don't what? I'm going to flip it on. Drops. It's actually doing exactly the same thing. It's running at like 225 milliamps, which is what I got uh, when I measured it individually. 12.6 volts. Let's see, let's go to mode. So we can get out of some of this and just measure the maximum currents and least amount of voltage. Well, I guess we're gonna have to let it go through a little bit of setup. I don't think we have to let it initialize smart drive. I think that draws 400 milliamps while it's trying to initialize the smart drive. I can hear it. There you go. Okay, now we just want to slew the axis. I want to keep this data as, as simple as possible. Uh, that's be 12 and a half volts right there. And if we slew the axis, so it looks like the current draw drops up to about 650 milliamps. 650 milliamps, uh, that'd be 12.1 volts. Well, that's almost all the way up. Let's go back down. 
See, that's five. That's almost mm, just a shot. Seven hundred milliamps. Twelve point one volt. Same thing. This is uh, one way. Uh, same thing. Uh, Seven hundred milliamps. Trying to get it back in kind of a normal position. I don't want to run it against it stops. Okay, now we'll I'll press two buttons at once and we'll sleep both axes. See, that's just a little over one amp, 1.05 amps, dropped to 11.6 volts. Let's go the other way. And that works. That works for me. So I don't know if I need. 14 volts or 16 volts or 18 volts or whatever, but seems like something pretty darn close to 12 volts works. Now, I am ever so slightly concerned that maybe it should be a little bit higher. Like maybe I should put a, a variac on the output down here uh, to um, raise it, make sure that voltage never drops below 12 volts. I perceived that I had this problem. You see, when I plug it into the wall outlet and I run it off of the power line, I, I don't think I've ever had a problem with it. I've had this thing for years. I love this thing. When I take it out in the field, sometimes I have some squirrely problems, and I'm not quite sure why. Uh, in general, they seem to, after a while, go away. Maybe it just needs to warm up. Who knows? But I said, well, I, I'm just thinking that maybe the voltage is dropping a little bit. But then, you know, with this monster battery and a 1,000 watt inverter, I said, surely it's not loading it. And apparently it is not. But um, this got me to thinking and actually kind of made me neurotic about it. Um, about, the, you know, even though it says 12 volts DC, I thought, well, maybe it really should be 14 or maybe it should be 18 because people just seem to have all kinds of issues and there, and there are several blogs about it and I don't get it. I think I have answered my questions. I don't think I have a problem. Uh, and now that I have this thing, see I've used RCA plugs in and out. I've got a two amp fuse right there. I might even lower it to one and a half. Um, another RCA plug there. Here's a disconnect in case I get tangled up in it and trip over it I, I just you know the plugs come in too instead of me you know breaking the wires off I think that's a good idea personally the RCA plug can be pulled out or the, whatever it can be taken apart you know what I wouldn't want to do is trip over it and get this thing and snatch this thing real hard sideways breaking it off inside the or breaking the telescope or whatever so uh, make it so it can come apart in a safe manner but I think I've answered my question about my 12 volts it doesn't seem to be that critical to me in my particular case now I don't doubt that other people uh, either have or perceive that they have a voltage problem but these but these uh, numbers that I'm presenting right here are true and accurate as verified by my fluke meters and my tectronics meters like I say this one this little cheapy thing right here is 200 millivolts low but the current meter is accurate so I hope this helps some of you guys and gals out there uh, with your telescope and trying to solve problems I have solved my problem with it I don't have a problem anymore I don't have a problem down here although I probably will throw in a variac just so I can raise the voltage another maybe half a volt just to make sure it doesn't drop below 12 volts at any point in time so there you go I hope this helps. I um, hope this helps answer some of those questions. It seems to be, there seem to be a lot of overwhelming ones about it. Oh, by the way, my uh, audio uh, uh, fans, don't go away. I haven't forgotten you. Look at this. Look at these two beautiful UTC transformers. This thing runs EL34s. And this one will be coming up as a project here soon. Look at all this stuff over here. I got more stuff I don't know what to do with. Here's a couple of uh, LS. 57s and a, and a power transformer. This is a, I don't remember. This has got to be a push pull 6L6 or something. This power supply right here is for this W20. I've shown it once, but I'm going to um, 
show it again with uh, KT88, KT66s, excuse me, versus the 5881. There's a couple of uh, W10s with the LS61 transformer. There's a power supply for this uh, Heath kit with the 807. There's another big power supply in the back for something. I don't remember what it's for. <laughs> anyway, um, I've got some more transformers that have been sent to me by a very nice lady. I certainly appreciate it. And uh, in time, I hope to uh, use them all and post them all and and uh, so that we can all enjoy it. And the last thing I'll mention is culmination. I had quite a problem with culmination because I didn't know what I was doing. And I turned one of these screws until it completely came loose. And then I did what I was told I was never supposed to do. And I had to remove this ring and the corrector plate. I was very, very careful to make sure I got it exactly back the way I took it off. But uh, anyway, uh, once I got it really culminated, I had it so far out I had to look through the rear end of the telescope and physically eyeball it from the, from the viewing side of the telescope to get this thing in the middle. It was so far off. And then I used the uh, laser culminator, which is not precision. The laser culminator, you got to go a whole lot better than that. But it does get you in the ballpark. And then you got to go out at night and let your telescope uh, acclimate to the temperatures. And then you got to do the, the donut thing and the, the airy disc and all that kind of stuff. The airy disc is maybe not something that I've spent a lot of time on, but I do end up with a perfect donut. And then I see I mark these. That one, see, I got fingernail polish there and there and there and there and there and there so that you're not up here just mindlessly turning these things so see how this when when the one is up and the two is up and the three is up they're they're aligned in a manner that is a very good starting point but if you're serious about your photographs of uh, deep space your combination is that everybody is important as your focus so I learned all that the hard way. I guess that's the only way we learn darn near anything. So I hope this helps, and uh, especially it's going to help me because I'm going to know exactly how much current voltage I got all the time now. So build yourself one of these. I mean, this is just a box with a, a wire in it goes through the meter and a wire out. That's the current, and this uh, right here is uh, just across the output. And then, of course, see how accurate your meter is. So that you know, like I say, in my case, it's uh, 200 millivolts slow. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I really enjoy this. I hope you guys and ladies out there do too. So uh, good seeing, good viewing. Have a lot of fun. Stay safe. And uh, uh, again, thanks for watching. And, and I always learn uh, from the comments and the discussions we have. So uh, there you go.